Are microplastics ruining our health? I'm Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon. And in today's video, we're gonna talk all about microplastics and how they affect our hormone production and potentially impact our sexual function and fertility. So microplastics are essentially plastics that are thrown away and they're incinerated or buried in landfills. And over time, this causes them to break down into really small plastic particles that are less than five millimeters in diameter. And these are defined as microplastics. Now, you can find these oftentimes in the runoff from landfills and groundwater. And to put this in perspective of exactly how much microplastic there is in the environment, one metric ton, one ton of plastic waste produces up to 100,000 microplastic particles after it's been incinerated. And over the last 70 years, we've gone from 1.7 million tons of waste in the 1950s to 348 million tons in 2017. So why do we even care about microplastics? Well, it's because they are ingested in our bodies through a few different ways. We can inhale them, they go through our skins, we can eat them or drink them. So. For an example, if you're drinking water from a plastic water bottle, each liter of liquid you drink from a plastic water bottle contains up to 15 microplastics. And that's a really, really small amount and not problematic at all. But if you're doing it consistently every day over many, many years, that can add up quite a bit. Now, we can also be getting them indirectly through other food sources like fish or shellfish. And we often hear about this in the news, right? Shellfish have microplastics in them. For example, they looked at the English Channel and they studied fish and they found that a third of them had microplastics in their bodies, regardless of what they were fed or what kind of species of fish they were. So when you eat those fish, you're gonna be ingesting microparticles. Now, the good news is that what we eat in terms of microplastics plastics, we can get rid of them in our bodies, about 90% of it through stool or through urine. Also, when they've looked at specifically comparing our ingestion of microplastics to airborne microplastics, they looked at mussels specifically, and they found that the microplastics you ate from eating mussels, actually the microplastic fibers from the air at the same time were actually higher doses than what you would get from eating mussels. So point taken is there's no real need to stop eating seafood, especially because there's so many great omega-3 fatty acids from seafood. Now, in terms of getting microplastics in the air, how does this happen? Well, basically when large plastics degrade in UV light or from being outdoors, it can cause these little microfiber filaments. Also clothing or healthcare products can cause microplastics to be blown into the atmosphere. And then these are then inhaled. Now, people who are getting really high doses of this are those who work in factories, either work with high volumes of plastics or maybe produce textiles. But again, there's some good news here is when they're inhaled, they have to be a really, really, really small size, five micrometers before they go into the lung. And that's because our body has clearance called the mucociliary clearance. What that means is that the hairs and the mucus that's produced by our respiratory system will actually push the microplastics out and you will digest them and then you will hopefully ideally excrete them through your stool or urine. The other really important thing is that in the United States in 2019, the FDA passed a microbeads free water act and microbeads are things that were put into sunscreens and cosmetic products and facial cleaners. And these would release a lot of microplastics, particularly when they were washed off. And so now these are restricted and you're not allowed to have microbeads in these products anymore. Um, So that's really useful because we're not getting it either transdermally or in the water system from those microbeads. So, okay, we've sort of debunked a lot of concerning things, but how do microplastics hurt us? Well, they work by creating something called oxidative stress. So essentially they alter the way electrons move around in our cells, creating what's called reactive oxygen species. And these can be particularly dangerous to our gonads where we're producing sperm cells and ovocytes for females. So in ovaries and and testicles for men. And these can also create problems in the actual endocrine system because they disrupt the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal access, which essentially creates hormones like testosterone and estrogen and sends signals throughout the body. 
So there's no really great human studies on the effects of microplastics. However, in mice, they've seen that exposure to microplastics in high doses leads to a decrease in hormones called follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, as well as testosterone in men mice. And these are important for hormone health in men. And in women mice or female mice, they saw increased FSH and testosterone levels in female mice. But again, like I said, we don't have data in terms of the impact on humans, but they did look at the occurrence of microplastics in six testicles and 30 semen samples. And again, really, really small study, but they did find small amounts of microplastics in testicles and in semen, but in really, really low volume. So they saw 0.23 particles per milliliter in semen, and semen is around five milliliters. Um, and they saw about 11.6 particles per gram in testes, and the average testicle is 20 grams. So these, again, were really small amounts, and they were also small sizes. They saw the size range from 20 to 100 micrometers. Now, this is a little bit surprising because typically we believe that to get into organs, you need to be less than 20 micrometers. But here we're seeing that, you know, they are getting a little larger and they are getting into the organs. However, it's believed that to get into the brain, where you may have heard some concern about microplastics in the brain, that you need to be 100 nanometers in size. However, again, as I mentioned, there's very little data in terms of how these things affect the human reproductive system. If you had to extrapolate from mice data based on body surface area, you would need to have about 16 micrograms per day per kilogram of body weight for it to be harmful. And that's 960 micrograms for an average person. So when you look at the average 70 year old and what the dose they get based on the data we have, it's almost 24 times lower than that dose. So basically an average 70 year old is getting about 40 micrograms per person. So for the entire person. And when you look at an 18 year old, they're getting about 6.4 micrograms per person. So really, really low doses. However, if you live in a more populated area or you work in an environment where there's lots of plastics, you may have a little bit of a higher exposure. Ultimately, I'd love to give you guys some tips to help reduce your exposure. So number one, if you live in a place where there are still microbeads in your cosmetics or your sunscreens, make sure you don't buy products that have microbeads in them because they will increase your exposure. Number two, try to buy clothes that are made from natural products like cotton, linen, or hemp, because that will reduce shedding of microplastics in the, during wearing and during washing. Number three, try to dust and vacuum regularly. This will help cut down on microplastic exposure in the microplastic fibers that are in the dust. Number four, avoid drinking from disposable water bottles. And if you have to drink from disposable water bottles, make sure they've not been in the sun for long periods of time because that's when they start degrading. And if you can, consider using some sort of filtration system. Even those home water filters can be pretty effective at reducing contaminants, particularly microplastics. Number five, avoid plastic cutting boards. So consider buying things like wood or steel for your cutting boards. And um, number six, microwave your food in glass containers rather than plastic or takeaway containers. Now, I want you guys to take home from this video that there are lots of limitations in the current research. We have lots of animal data, not as much human data. So we still have a lot of work to do in terms of figuring out what dosing is gonna be concerning in humans and what size of microplastics are really gonna create harm. And like, what can we do essentially? And how does this affect us in real life? So I hope you guys found this helpful. As always, my videos are meant to be informative and educational and hopefully help you guys live a happier and healthier life. If you guys are enjoying my content, do me a favor, share my content, share it with your friends, share it with your family, share it on social media, take a screenshot and tag me. I love seeing that. And it will be super helpful so other people can get this free content all over the world. And if you like this video, make sure you check out my last video on endocrine disrupting chemicals and you'll learn something there as well. As always, I'm gonna take care of yourself because you're worth it.